Look out, footy's back in today. I'm Bruce Duell, the flying dorm. Wait, no, I'm not. I am losing my hair at a rapid rate, though, I'll tell you that much. It's getting sketchy. Every time you go to the bar, you're like, geez, that looks shocking. Anyway, I am James Clements, and this is the AFL Today Show. This is a big one, gentlemen. Not only am, am I joined by two just random dudes I fan in the office, but they also happen to be two very of my best friends in the entire world. There's social guy oh. Leo over there. Jim, I'm feeling very demure. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for a good podcast. Demure. 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 He's, with, he's on his TikTok trends. I love this. <laughs> and in the middle, it's Marcus Bazano. I'm not, I'm not going to rip at Essen and Guernsey this time around like I did last time I was on the show, but, you know. There's always time. <laughs> There's always we'll just time go grab it. Uh, but this is a cracking, cracking episode. Why is that, you might ask? I can't hear you out there. But it's the final round of the home and away season. We get a week Sad. off next week. I mean, of course, we're working the entire time next week, and we'll be doing shows the entire next week. But still, this is it. Ten teams go home. It's all over Red Rover for them. Mm. We're going to get stuck into all the games. We've got massive game previews because there's so much going on with this top eight. Um Essentially, it's still a top 10, technically. So we'll break down every sort of scenario and whatnot as to what's going to happen out of each of these games. We've got some tips, we've got all the good stuff, we've got some news. So, of course, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, the old AFL Today Show. Uh, follow it on the socials. What is it on the facey there, Leo? Aussie Rules Today on uh, Facebook. Doing a good job. I'm oh, very proud of you. Thank you, Jim. That's the nicest <laughs> thing you've ever said. To be honest, it might actually be. <laughs> uh, anyway, 40 years back, let's do it. The let's news go. before round 24. So, this popped off yesterday. We don't yep. actually have confirmation of it yet. Joshua Shelley is meant to be dropped for the uh, Adelaide game this weekend mm. because the Crows are a joke of a team. Yeah, well, that, that sums it that up. sounds about right, yeah. Very something, supportive of them, I must say. Yeah, yeah. something so, must have happened behind the scenes. His last five weeks, 10 goals, 31 score involvements, 12.8 player rating. Uh, the only general forwards in the comp with more goals over that stretch are Toby Green and Ben Keys. Yeah, not bad yep. sort of company. Mm. Uh, ten touches last week, I think, as well. Did the tooth thing to the uh, Port LA Power, uh, <laughs> Power fan. That. Yeah, it's uh, good. Enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. And if the Adelaide Crows are going to be like, oh, that goes against our stuff, then what do you stand for as a club? Mm. Mm. I talk about this with the Dyson Heppel stuff. What do you stand for as a club? If Josh Rochelle can't go out there and have a bit of fun and actually kind of mostly deliver on the ground, he didn't kick three goals. He didn't win them the game. Mm. At the same time, it's a showdown. That was fun. It fired mm. him up. It didn't work, but still, what yeah, are you doing? Yeah, what what, what sort of message does this send <laughs> yeah. to like the rest of the like the young yeah. dudes of that club? Where you've got Rory Laird wasn't it, during the week throwing him under that the bus. That was strange. Yeah. That you've was got very like people strange. coming out and just talking trash. It's like, yo, mm. Rochelle's like, dude, I'm contracted to 2029. Can I get to the blues now? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> well, he was, was he, he was a Carlton fan, wasn't he, he growing was, up? Yeah. yeah. yeah Rory Laird must be on the selection panel, I reckon. Uh to drop him, but what do they call him? The desk? The Roy, they call him the desk, don't they? Uh, it's it's some weird nickname. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you that, but I think look, it's a bit concerning. I think you look at a player and their their personality, and you look at dropping them after that after they've had so much spotlight on them. That uh, just doesn't. That'll well just with me. encourage every young player at Adelaide to be like, oh, hang on a sec, like I can't really Show be my full, my full self. You have to be very professional by the book. And, For a mm. team that's had Tex Walker and Isaac Rankine on the books a few yep. years now, mm. uh, it's weird because. Just to let him send up, like finish off his year in the right way. It's like it's just one that game. happens. It's one yep. game. Yeah. It's like oh, I did the teeth thing. That was funny. It's like no, oh, you're doing it wrong. You're not playing next week. He's like what? I'm not playing footy until 2025 now. <laughs> yeah, blow it out your nose. Like what the hell? Yeah, it's not worth the backlash to to be dropped for one game. I think it's absolutely, absolutely yeah. ridiculous. What yep. are you doing? Out of like, Does he get traded? Carlton will take him. I, there'll be heaps of teams that will take him. I think North yeah, should go after him. There's a few others in Melbourne, Richmond. I think maybe, any club uh, in the league would win him. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, uh, we might part with Ashton Moyer, maybe, after his goal. Ashton Moyer. He's played 20 <laughs> minutes of football and you want to. Yeah, and he's a gun. <laughs> and he's a mate of mine. Straight, he's hanging out. straight swap with We were hanging out down at Auskick. <laughs> it was sweet. Ballarat boy, is he? No, he uh, <laughs> might actually be WA. But either way. Uh, speaking of which, Koshy wanted to get rid of the nastiness in the showdown. It came out after. He's, oh, it's just. It's just lower class to say that us power fans don't have any, have any teeth, he said, as a weird bald-headed loon, like, probably with fake veneers. Like, what are we doing here? Who are you trying to impress, Koshy? Oh, just, can we all just chill out a little bit? No! It's the bloody showdown! They played it 56 times and it's 28 and 28. We're not going to calm it down. This is blood! 
And if it's not blood, it's bloody bodies in a barrel. This is South Australia writ large right there. It's horrible pies and bodies in the barrel. Come on, Koshy, pull your weird head in. Uh, anyway, speaking of weird heads, <laughs> Razor Ray. It's his final game this week. This is sad. Mm. Uh, farewell to a legend. So he's your goat, isn't he? Uh, yeah. Goat of umpiring. <laughs> no, no, let's say goat of no, umpiring. let's just say the goat, goat of your a, footy. Can we get him on this podcast? That's a pretty poor idol to look up to. Nah, oh. nah, that's fine. Don't worry. Can we get him on this podcast? Though? I mean, we could try. Yeah, like, I reckon it'd be good content. I don't I know. I feel like actually. it'd just be a bit too, like, Jimmy yelling too loud, bring it down, bring it down. I'm like, no, Ray's like, that's it, you're out, you're out. You're out. I'm like, what did I do? It's my show. Shut up, Ray. 375 games, two grand finals. Not bad. Not bad for an umpire, yeah. I I think so. We covered this earlier in the year, right? Like yeah. when it was sort of came out that it was his last season, and it's like I like umpires to have like a dash of personality. I don't want too much. I don't want them to be making about them. Obviously, uh, Aussie rules. You don't quite. It's good to have like back and forth. Like it's very similar to obviously my thing is basketball. Yep. You mm-hmm. can have back and forth. Like you can have healthy back and forth with an umpire or referee. Mm-hmm. Um, and it all comes down to respect. If they respect the job that you do, if you're good at your job, then it just it's fine, right? And I think Razor Ray has sort of proven that over the years that even with that dash of flash, he obviously knows the gig mm. and he's pretty bloody good at it. So mm. has a laugh, like with the players as well, like sometimes. So yeah. yeah. I like that. Taking, love- the, taking the piss out of players. Yeah. Like, what was that? And, and himself, exactly, yeah. I reckon, as well. I reckon there'll be times where he just has a dig at himself and players would love it. For sure. Like even that moment when he got when he got hit in the crown jewels uh in the Richmond North Melbourne the game. Little, and he gave uh, the LBW. LBW. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Man, hit the groin by football. Uh, <laughs> football in the groin. Uh other retirements though. Mm. One personal uh, you know, tough one for me. My beloved Hugh Greenwood. NBA Australia fan, oh, NBA Australia guest, yeah. former basketball player, legend yep. of three. Well, maybe not legend, but excellent. Performer at three clubs. Uh, it, was it was good at the Suns. It was mm, yeah. really fun at the Suns. I don't know what happened at North Melbourne. He just sort of. Well, I think he did his. Well, he did his knee. At too Gold many Coast. of the similar players, I think, at North. Having done mm. his knee at Gold Coast, and then North pick him up as a bit of a surprise to everybody, right? They're like, "Oh, yeah. wait, we, like the Suns, like we were going to pick him back. What the hell, man?" Yeah. And North are like, mm. "Ha ha!" And then he didn't get too much of a run down there. But yeah. either way, 121 yeah. games across three teams. He's a legend. Never took a career bounce. No, really, which is, oh, which is a funny stench footy so, would be all over. They that. were, yeah. they were. That's where I got it from. That's Shout awesome. Man. For a bar, did you know you used to play basketball? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Marlion, Marlion Pickett. Yeah, Marlion Pickett what is a, weird a career. I think this has been. Th- I think our friend of the program, Louis McCurdy, uh, was actually out there. Louis, Louis, <laughs> Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Louis McCurdy. An old Triple J presenter. Yeah, sure. Uh, he was like. Uh, you can run like a thousand years of AFL Aussie rules footy mm. and not have a story like Marlon Pickett. Yep. And okay. I'm like, yep, yeah, probably not. Well, wins a VFL grand final, wins the best on ground. The next week makes his AFL debut yep. in a grand final, mm. plays in front of 100,000 people in that grand final. Next game he plays in front of zero people because of COVID. Because yeah. COVID. Yeah. Totally like right. that's nuts. And it was yeah. that year in 2019 that he got – uh, drafted in mid season, right? So yeah. he's he was probably first the, half of the year playing first, Waffle and yeah. He was probably the first mid season draft pick to go well. To win a flag, sweet. yeah. As well. Yeah. So I think he ends up around 97, 98 games. I can't actually remember off the top of my head. Um but struggled this year with like what was it calf a calf injury early, I, I think. feel like the whole Richmond team did. Yeah. And uh sort of came back, got back to full fitness and then they wanted him to come back for next year. He's like, mm, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> going out on Top, He's 32. Maybe, so. yeah, 32. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you're uh, mid-season older. Richmond recruit. have their worst year yet. Come back next year. Uh, nah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. All right. 90 games only in the end. Apparently. The other one for me, Zach Tui, beloved blue. <laughs> so what, he didn't acknowledge Carlton? <laughs> so he did. Right? I saw that video. This, yeah. this sort of popped off and pe- Carlton people got angry about it because just everybody just chill. <laughs> it was quite literally they were shooting it for the Geelong socials. Yes. Yeah. Like, it wasn't his like overall retirement message. It came out straight after. It was like, oh, yeah, and for Carlton, like, Thanks. Tony, yeah. Thanks, boys. You know. Yeah. It's like Love I love the Geelong Football Club. It's Two, your home. 286 oh, games. Yeah. Irish games record holder. Won the yep. flag in 2022 after he went over. Uh, kicked 100 goals on the nail. Really? Like 40 with mm. Galton, 60 with the Cats. Hit the time. Always that booming left leg. So that's why he and I have like a bit of a uh, connection. <laughs> oh, my God. Just saying. Even Gerald laughed at that one. I like that. Producer Gerald didn't mind that. <laughs> Other little bits of news. Like – uh, Zach Tui, though, like in terms of his like impact, he is like one of those classic cats as well, which I think is kind of cool. He fits that culture, he yep. fits that yep. vibe, and uh, you know, he's like an. You Irish. always get a seven out of ten from him, minimum. Yep. 
That's right. It's a really good way of putting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other little bit of news was that Bevo goes past Ted Whitten for games coach for the Dogs this week. Yep. Uh, I mentioned that I think at the on the Sunday White Sunday show last week uh, that he was tired. So. That's kind of good. Ted Whitten mm. Jr. came out and said some nice things about him. So, like, God, it's great that he's turned the season around. It's like, you're going to make the finals still. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. If they don't make the finals, is he gone? That might be. I feel like they're <laughs> never going to sack him. I feel like, and especially after he turned the season around. I know, yeah. I know. But there's so many of those that, that have been like that this season. Even Ken Hinckley he was caught would be sacked, and now he's top four. It is. It's going to go down as the most chaotic season that we've seen. Yep. Mm. And I think going into this finals series, uh, it's just dartboard material of just like Anyone who's going to win it. Blindfolded. There's That's no hard. one or two teams that are absolute standouts. Exactly. That's why this final eight breakdown is going to be very good, which we'll get to after the 22 under 22. The final team was announced. Yep. Mm. This is by the Players Association or something, isn't it? With uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it all is sort it, of gets is rolled that, out. the one Dangerfield's in China? Yeah, I think it's yes. the – Yes. Uh, it's a pretty good team. It's it's because you're like, wait a second, Nick Dacos is under 22. He's the captain. Luke Jackson's under 22. Luke Jackson being under 22 is still like, he's like 42. Like, what I know. Sheasel's the vice captain. You've got Luke Jackson there as well. So just to quickly go through it, Naziah Wanganee Miller. Mm. Yep. Happy with that. Awesome. Mac yep. Andrew, Darcy yep. Wilmot, yep. Max Holmes. He there. He's 28. You can't tell me <laughs> that he's not. What are we doing? Everyone who plays for Geelong right now is 28. Uh, Josh Weddle, 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 Colby McKercher. Jeez, that's a bit of a ring in the... It's going to be really oh, yeah, hard to believe Errol's under 22. Whoa, as well. Errol. He could have won a brown, though, but he was pretty bad. Uh, Harley <laughs> Reid. Whoa, Harley Reid. Harley Reid on ball. That's a <laughs> bit. Of- That's pretty good, right in the center circle. Jason Horn yep. Francis feels like he's on been around wing. for a million years on the wing. <laughs> I don't think he's a wing in his life, Horn Francis. He's, he's got, got legs, though. Guinea he's got legs. next to Sam Darcy and Ollie Dempsey yep. in the half forward line. Mm. Josh Tracy. Jeez, Jamara and Jai Miss. That's not a bad forward line there. Yeah, four tools. Two two tools from two, two tools from the Dockers as mm-hmm. well, right there, and two, and two from, from the, the Dogs. Dogs. Yeah. Bizarre. Uh, Massimo Rochelle, the Warlord, and Josh Draper. What about the on ballers? Well, we sort of mentioned Sheasel, Dacos, and oh, Luke Jackson. Oh, so, yeah, uh, big that. snubs out of it. I mean, it feels like they nailed this because I don't feel like anyone else really, really massively stands out. Like, yeah, mm, there's Jake Saligo maybe on Saligo the bench. Saligo possibly. I Tanner feel like Blue. Callahan is a bit underrated. He could yeah. sneak in for maybe Josh Draper. On the sure. bench. Yeah. Yep. yeah, the Josh Draper one on the bench is like, yeah, sh- sure, okay. Uh, mm. Love to see that no Bombers and no Blues <laughs> made it. So No Blue? Oh, yeah. yeah. No Elijah Hollins missed out. It was the only one we actually had in the squad, so not great. Yeah, not ideal. Mm. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's do the Round 24 Game Previews. Let's previews, do it. Previews, previews. Pretty big week, gentlemen, as these things go, you know. What is there? One team that's actually settled into the eight properly. Mm. Yep. Other ones can still feasibly. Technically, out. Collingwood. Uh, we go one through ten basically, which is very cool. And one of those teams is playing on the. Oh, that's right, it's ten. Collingwood <laughs> and playing against Melbourne on Friday night. Uh, I think for some reason we've written marble. It's at the G. Seven forty p.m. The over under for this one is one sixty nine point five. How do we feel right there? So Collingwood favoured by four and a half points, and the over under one sixty nine point five. You think about this, 10 of the last 11 Demons games at night have gone under. Yeah, I was going to say, mm. I feel like this is going to be a bit of a defensive slog, this one. This is like 86-54. Yeah. Although yeah. I think if Collingwood had the game on their terms, the majority of it, it could go over just because of how free-flowing and open that their game yep. style is. Um, saw it against Brisbane. They have the potential to pile on five, six goals in five, six minutes. But they only do that one quarter a game. Yes. yes. Yep. It's the Carlton blueprint, <laughs> that one. Uh, <laughs> which sucks. <laughs> the... If you remember the King, you might remember the King's birthday game. It was pretty big. It happened. 89 yep. 51, the Pies won it. Uh, there was a bloke named Christian Petrarca got hit by a car in the middle of that game. Uh, it was pretty pretty crazy. Yep. Oh, no, that was the injuries he sustained. Like the broke, was it the broken ribs, the busted spleen? Yeah. They're like, it's what happens. Still when manages you, yeah. to bring out cooking videos on TikTok, though, which is priorities. Can't yeah, get you, you hate that. Oh, I, I can't stand it. But that's because, like, his diet just, in, like, <laughs> just completely, like, revolves around, like, I don't know. Highway side like Suvers, and that's how he rolls. So <laughs> it's the Marcus way. Uh, but the Pies have now lost only two of their last 16 that have been decided by a goal or less. That is just insane, isn't it? Yeah. That is, yeah. Well, you've got the most experienced team, so you'd hope so. And well, both of those losses come this year, maybe? I'd assume so. Well, Actually, one was against, been... um, who'd they just lose to that was close? Uh, Sydney. Yep, that was two mm. weeks ago. 
Can't remember the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, Leo. He came prepared. Uh, the cool thing is they only need to win by 15 goals or so to uh, give themselves a shot of the eight. Isn't that, though, Carlton then need to lose by 15 goals or so? There's a pretty big switcheroo. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in terms of the actual... Uh, ins and outs? The ins and outs have actually, you know, finally come out, which is good. Yep. So with all this in mind, you're looking at this sort of extremely strange setup for the uh, – the Mel- like Melbourne are playing a dead rubber. They're done. They're cooked. Yep. And they're like, nah, we're just going to roll everybody out there one more time yeah, just to see what one happens. Change, They've virtually. got one change in this game. I thought it was going to be much more than this, yep. but you've got Bailey Laurie coming in for Tom Sparrow. Uh, Trent Rivers plays his 100th game. That's very nice. Mm. Uh but you've got everybody else out there, right? You've got Milkshake, you've got Maximus Gornicus, Tomlinson, Tom McDonald. For the Pies, off goes Billy F. and Frampton, Jack Bytel, Dan McStay, which we mentioned on yesterday's show, yep. Ned Long. In comes Joe Richards, Finn McRae, Ed Allen, and Charlie Dean. Mm. Uh, the three three of those names are just like the world's like most boring Collingwood names. Joe Richards, Ed Allen, Charlie Dean. And then yeah. Finn McRae, which is like a sick name. You'd That's think weird. that they'd be playing in the 1940. That's it. Hello, it's Charlie, Dan, and <laughs> Edward Allen taking on Joe Richards and the boys. Um, this is a fascinating setup just because, like, Collingwood do have something to play for. Yep. Feasibly. Yeah, sure. Could they do something like that? Could they go absolute chaos? The big question is can the Pies win by 90? The, no. Okay. No. I don't think so, so either. Yeah, they just can't do it. They did Melbourne, done it all year. Did Melbourne name a basically a full-strength team to make sure that doesn't happen? Are they <laughs> actually out there going, we're not even going to give you a shot? But that's pretty sad, though, if then they're just like their happiness is making sure a team doesn't beat them by 90. Mm. Like, just, I don't know, play the kids. Yep. Darcy Cameron versus Max Gorn, which is a really fun one. Uh, Cameron's been good. really, really good to finish this season. Yep. Uh and then Gorn just loves the G and he loves playing against the Pies. So mm. that's actually a really fun one. Super coach wise, I think Gorn has a big day. Interesting. Uh, tips, picks, vibes, anything else you want to hit on with this one? Because Collingwood, look, they really do uh, essentially need like their best scenario, right? Like they have to beat Melbourne by 15 goals. Carlton and Frio then have to actually win their games. And I don't know. If the Saints get off to like, if the Pies do just put one on Melbourne, they're probably not going to win by 100. Mm. But it would be fun because every Carlton fan, including myself, would be like, oh, come <laughs> on, man. Are you serious? No. Just they did it in 2022. I don't want it to happen again. Um, anyway, I still think the Pies win, but I think it's only mm. by about 16. I think they're a little bit too quick, a little bit yep. too fast, but Melbourne's experience will keep them in it. It'd just be a bit of a gross Friday night slog. Or it could just open up and just be like one of those free-flowing, just random games like what, Melbourne and Essendon earlier this year? Mm. It was like a pretty weirdly high-scoring game that Melbourne beat them in. Uh, we played them in the rain. Oh, yeah. And it was low-scoring. <laughs> was it? No. It was there like was at least one decent one for 65. Melbourne. Right? <laughs> surely, surely. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go the Pies. Leo? Pies by four goals. Nice one, Mark. Also. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go the Pies by five goals, just because they won. They won five of the last six against Melbourne, so pretty good record. They have not bad, not bad. Uh, Saturday, this is where it all starts getting interesting and more top eight heavy. Mm. Geelong versus West Coast. Amazingly enough, they are 53 and a half point favourites. Are the Cats down at GMHBA Taxpayer Stadium, 145 in the afternoon. The over under is 176.5. Could Geelong top that by themselves? I think so. They could. Yeah. West They're Coast played a Carlton good. team that had none of their players last week and still gave up 100 points. Yeah. Now they mm. don't have Jerry McGovern. They don't have Tom Barras. This is going to get ugly. This is a West Coast team that is the 17th ranked offense and the 16th were, uh, 17th ranked, 16th ranked, sorry, defense. <laughs> it's going 16, 17. The Cats' offense has been fantastic this year. They're fifth yeah. overall. So. They could really put on a hurt over West Coast because there's also the sneaky little thing where I think they've won eight straight against West Coast at Taxpayer Stadium and the average winning margin is 67.6. Yep. 67. Oh, my God. That's a, that's a pretty big difference, I reckon. Uh, in for the Cats, Zach Tui back for his final game. Jeb Buse, Town and Brune. That's Wait, is Tui, Tui not playing finals? Oh, well, I guess he could still continue playing, but final oh. regular season – He's retired. Off he goes. Uh, See your Cats fans at GMHBA. That's it. Basically. It's a nice send off. Uh, Heppel didn't get. <laughs> no Tomahawk, obviously. We talked about that the other day. 
Oishan Mullen, uh, Mitch Nevitt, and Gary Rowan out for the Cats. Ooh. The Eagles out goes Withan, McGovern, Andrew Gaffley, and Ryan and Zane True. Oh, oh, boy. oh boy. Look at that defense of Tom Cole, Harry Edwards, Brady Hugh, Liam Duggan, <laughs> Rhett Bazo, and Ruben Gimby. What a, oh, and the cats are just out there going, we've got a we've got a Jeremy Cameron, <laughs> we've got an Ollie Henry, and we've got a uh, Shannon Neal. Yeah. They're gonna kick 30 goals. Oh, this is gonna boy. be nuts. Uh in comes Rhett Bra- Bazo, Clay Hall. Campbell Chesser, Ryan Marich, and Jack Hutchinson. Three of those people are made up. Um, <laughs> with all due respect to our Eagles fans out there. But incredibly, so I pointed this out before the show started, these two teams have not played since April last year. Yeah, that well, is insane. That's- April in 2023 was the last time Geelong played West Coast. That's insane. What are we doing? No, I, needed- I think West Coast would uh, would like that. It's uh, fine for them, I guess. Yeah. Uh, mm. Cats need to win by 21 goals to finish in the top, to give themselves a crack at the top two. They beat, oh, which is pretty cool. Because <laughs> uh, if the Western Bulldogs beat GWS and Frio beat Port, they're on. Was that like 120, 130 points? So let's go. Yeah. Uh, it's a fascinating setup. So that's the big question, I guess, for this one. The Cats mm. need to win by at least 10 to give themselves a crack into the top three. Can they? Will they? I think they absolutely can. This, yep. As we mentioned, this West Coast defense is depleted and the Cats have one of the best offenses in the comp. So I think they're going to run rampant. Marcus, what do you reckon? Yeah, for sure. I think, I think West Coast, well, they'll hold scoreless in the second quarter against your mob, and, and your mob were pretty depleted as well. They lost by 65 to Carlton at home last week, and Carlton didn't have a forward line. Like, mm. We're playing Brody Kemp. That's like, definitely worrying signs. I think this could this result sort of lies with the head coach as well. Like, Could he be the head coach next season? Nah, I think it's sort of regardless of the result, he shouldn't, be, he shouldn't be head coach. So... Mm. Obviously, like, we've talked this out a couple of times during the season, right? There's uh, There are whispers that, oh, someone who's said that they're not in for the West Coast job, West Coast job yeah. is secretly in and, yeah. like, and everyone else is sort of taking their name out. You're like, oh, right, great. But you, do you want to be that guy? It's like this is the Uze job, right? Yeah. Like, do you want to be that guy in West Coast? Like, well, another year of floggings next year. We're going to slowly get better. But those mm. like those losses go on my record. Surely you just roll Jared Schofield out there, Schofield out there for one more year and just go, you eat it. Come on. Pay <laughs> you pretty well. But, yes. but then they're going to be in that position next year, I reckon. Like, I feel mm. like they need someone from the outside to come in that has to be so motivated for this job and with a clear plan to say, like, I want this player, I want to get rid of this player. This is the way we're going to move forward. Mm. Harley Reid, captain coach. I don't Let's mind do that, actually. Like Let's do it. <laughs> uh, Geelong by 88. Leo? Cats by 95. Oh. And the Cats break the ton, three digits, 100. <laughs> we escalate. What if West Coast win this? <laughs> <laughs> well, if the, it is funny because, like, we've got two teams in the eight. So the, the Hawthorne North game is a similar one, right, where it's like it's almost like a ride it down, lock it in, that's done, right? Yep. If one upset happens out of those two, it would be absolute chaos yeah. for the eight. Mm. Definitely. But it's not going to happen. Hey, the Dimmer Bowl, Richmond versus <laughs> Gold Coast. Amazingly enough, so we had Ned Moyle, my very mess, my very best mess, mate, mess bait, uh, <laughs> my very best mate on yesterday's show, which is great. And he pointed out that this is the first time they've played at the MCG this year. I watched that; it was very good, which is incredible. Gold Coast are ten and a half point favourites at the MCG. Who coaches the Gold Coast Suns now? Mm. Dimmer. Dimmer. Who was be. his old team? Rich the Tigers? They're playing each other. And it's his first game back at the G <laughs> with his new gig, and it's against his old team. That's awesome. I love this. That said, you've got Dusty's farewell. You've mm. got Marlon's farewell. It could be everybody's farewell. This could be the final game in the yellow and black for Dan Rioli, for Shea Bolton, for Jack Graham, and for Liam Baker as yep. well. Adam Uzo. <laughs> <laughs> you've also got Dylan Grimes. Yeah, Dylan Grimes. Yep. His farewell, say, yeah. like, he and Dusty obviously aren't playing, but just, mm. like, this is huge. Yeah. What a chaotic, chaotic situation. The over-under is a really interesting one. It's 174 and a half. That seems pretty high. It does seem high because you've got a Suns team that scores what, around 56, 57 points away from home. Mm. But Richmond mm. give up roughly 200 million points a game. So, yeah, well, you, well it's 103.2. Point well. That's 17th in the comp. Uh can the Suns get going? Who knows? But anyway, mm. it is an awesomely weird, incredible game, the Dimmer Bowl. I'm stoked. Can you tell I'm pumped? <laughs> I'm excited. I might be going to that game. So oh, really? I feel, feel bad for you, mate. It's the game of the weekend. What are you talking about? It's going to be massive. I think so. Maurice Rioli, <laughs> Liam Baker, Marlon Pickett in for the Tigers. Yeah. Jacob Blight, uh, Trezzy, and Coulthard out as well. Trezzy. I love Trezzy. 
Uh, <laughs> for the Suns, Alex Sexton and Jack Lukosius. Lukosius uh, shredded it apparently in the VFL last week. Yeah. He was always sort of on the way back for this one. Out goes David Swallow and my beloved Jed Walter. What's going on? What are we doing, Dimmer? I think what we shouldn't we win now, 100%. The Tigers could now win this if Jed Walter's not playing. You're killing me. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is a very strange setup, this game. Everybody's farewell. All of Gold Coast's last six August games have gone over the points total. That is a very weird Which is a random, like, it's just like <laughs> as the sort of end of their season's hit, they just give up the ghost and, like, everyone's scoring. So mm. I actually don't mind the over in that one, just as okay. a bit of a uh, Saleavo special. I think the weather's meant to be lovely down here. Yeah, yeah, weekend, it is. So. Yep. Uh, so I guess the big question out of all this is, do the Tigers want to win this? Or are they going to north themselves? Yeah, do they want the worst record in the club's history or the number one pick? I think they want to win. They want to farewell some of their players, surely. you got to farewell Dusty. Like, you'd be doing him a disservice. Yeah, I mean, he's doing them a disservice by not playing, I'd say. <laughs> it's his uh, back. It's his back. I'm a back, man. Mm. This is, it is hilarious. This is their worst record in club history. Win this and you're like suddenly jeopardizing the number one pick. It would be the funniest thing in the world if North just suddenly fell backwards into like, well, I don't know, another number one. But anyway, I don't. feature might be cool. What do, we, what do we reckon actually happens? I'm going to go Gold Coast win this. By about 16, I think. I think Tigers win. I think they just do it for the, like, it's the farewell win, I reckon. And I still think they get last. I think North will do enough just to not, like, get bottom. So. Mm -hmm. They've had plenty of games in the G this season. Gold Coast haven't. I'm going to go, the, just because it's funny, I'm going to go Richmond by a couple of kicks. But if you flash back to opening round, Gold Coast were winning this 74 to 7 during the second quarter. Oh, that's right. Remember yeah. That? I forgot about opening that. Opening round of the season in Gold Coast. I forgot oh. that happened. Oh, my God. I don't remember that. Far Tigers back. actually came back, didn't they? They got within <laughs> they like did? four goals. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, warning signs right there, but still, there. What is the the percentage difference between Richmond and North at the moment? Is like two points. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know if Richmond are going to beat Gold Coast by enough to pull that back, but yep. it would be funny. <sighs> right, Hawthorne, your beloved team, there, Leo. Yep. Fifty-one and a half point favorites against the Ruse at Utahs. 435. This is going to be a barn burner. 169 and a half is the over under. Hawks perfectly middling it at the moment. They're eighth on offense, eighth in defense. That's pretty bad. good. Mm. That's a pretty good shape up there. As opposed to the Roos, who was 16th and 18th. That's not a good shape. Yeah, that's not great. But this is, I love a bowl. Clarko Bowl! Let's go! <laughs> After an 0 and 5 start this year, I love that Sam Mitchell, like his first, well, the first win this season came against the Roos. Yep, yep. And then to get him into the finals, he could beat his old mucker Clarko one more time and make finals. I think mm. our first win against them last year was like our first win of the year, too. There you go. Yeah. It's remarkable. Uh, for the teams, I mean, the fact that actual, James Sicily is actually named is a shock. And Scrimshaw. I mean, Sicily, mm. it's in Tassie. He's like, no. Nah. <laughs> but they need to win, so I guess yeah. they forced him on the plane. Was, uh, was it in Tassie where he kicked the bag and did his shoulder? Was that Adelaide Oval? Uh, no, I think well, he kicked the bag kicked, down there this kicked, year. Yeah. He was the match winner against Frio, yeah, in Tassie. Yeah. In comes Finn McGuinness for the Hawks because Will Day is obviously out with a... Yep. Collarbone. But it's not a broken collarbone. It's a weird dislocation, like, uh. weird thing that... Uh, it came out Spider Everett in 1997. Oh, I before did see you this guys quote. were thought I did of, see this quote. Uh, had the same thing that knocked him out of the playing for the rest of the finals and missing the 1997 grand final. Um, mm. But hopefully, Will Day's all right. You, you know, he gets the bye, he gets the entire final series. So maybe. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, yeah, for no, exactly. They have to win this game yeah. to actually get in the finals. Will Phillips, Toby Pink, and Blake Jury come in for the ruse. Out goes Charlie Goldman, Miller Bergman, obviously, with the concussion and Eddie Ford. I thought there'd be more changes for North. I thought so, maybe too. Larky got a pretty bad knock against the Dogs. I thought he could potentially miss. I thought there'd be a few others too. Mm. But the big one for Supercoach is that Sheasel has not been named, yes. obviously. So yes. that sort of he was in the moon boot still at the start of this week. He was always looking a little bit sketchy. Why would you risk him? Exactly. Exactly. Don't do it. Uh, but at the same time, if you're a super coach, you go there. Zach Fish has still been named on the half forward, so not bad. He's named at mm. centre half forward. <laughs> yeah, that's going to go kick it back. Uh, Hawks have actually won five straight against the Roos as well. Average winning margin, 35.6. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, Whipping boys. Eight of the last nine Hawks games that used Taz, though, have gone over. So the 169. Over or under? Five. Under. Under? Under. That's right. Weird things happen in Tassie. Remember that. <laughs> Hawks are 11 and 6 there since 2020 as well. So yep. they don't mind Tassie, even though James Sisley hates it. So... That line of 51 and a half, 
I'm going to go over with that. So yep. Hawks win by 54. The big question is, can the Roos play spoiler? I say just not. I just don't think they've got enough class. Yeah. I think the Hawks, what we've seen from them the last month has just been absolutely inexorable and they obviously yep. smash them and win their way to a heat finals berth. Yeah. Leo? Look, I'm not, I'm not one to get too overly confident about Hawthorne, but I just think North's defense, I can't see them defending our forward line. I think last, mm. I might be wrong, but last six weeks we've had the best offense in the comp. I just can't see how North can, can cover our speed. Yep. But you mean the 18th ranked defense in the AFL this year? <laughs> they can't cover the Covering number one. Covering the Hawthorns, <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing offense that just tore shreds off the Blues two weeks ago mm. in a must-win game. Uh, what do you reckon, Marcus? Yeah, I think Hawks comfortably, although I do think it goes under. It's meant to be raining all morning pretty heavily. Uh, Ooh, in North that could keep North in so, it a little bit, I reckon. I think it's more a case of North score 30 points and Hawthorne score 80 I don't mind this. Yeah. <clears throat> Weird things happen in Tassie, though. Absolutely. Never forget. It would be. We've actually said this. So the reason that Alex is not here is because, I don't know, we don't like him. The other one is uh, the <laughs> yeah. Stats Boy. We sent him down to Tassie to check this out. So he's going to be there on Saturday, mm. which is very is fun. He's going live for it. Uh, he's going to be going it. live. We'll be on the socials. He'll yep. be causing all sorts of havoc, eating pies, just getting mm. amongst it. Just send him messages. Anyone watching this? Just, just do it. We'll, send, we'll, put, <laughs> we'll post his number in a second. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so Stats Boy goes down there to watch – his team get absolutely humiliated by your team, Leo. I yep. feel like we should have well, sent hopefully. both of you. But. I was thinking about going, but uh, look, the fixture came out like two weeks ago. It did. That it's was just tough. tough to plan. Save your money for the prelim. Yeah, oh, sure. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> then the big one for Marcus, Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane are 35 and a half point favourites against the Bombers up at the Gabba. Mm. 7.25 p.m. on Saturday. The over under 170.5. I'm flying over on that one. Oh, yes, boy. Why absolutely. is that? Offense, Brisbane, they are kicking just... Uh, kicking ass and taking names at this point, right? They're fourth yep. ranked in the comp, and mm. they should have kicked from, much a much bigger score. If they had just week, sprayed yeah. it like you know, I don't know my five year old around the toilet bowl <laughs> at the uh, MCG on the weekend. <laughs> what about you around the toilet bowl? Losing from his old man. Um, and Essendon, we know that they love getting to shootouts, right? So that one seventy point five should be flown over. But this is the Dyson Heppel farewell game. Uh, how do you feel about this, Marcus? Him not getting a farewell game in front of the Bombers faithful down here in Melbourne. Yeah, I was really disappointed. I think you guys covered it a lot on the show. Um, he was the captain of the club, uh, especially when throughout the drug saga years, he missed a yeah. year, came back captain of the club. I remember him getting a standing ovation the first time we touched the ball um, in that game against Hawthorne, actually. Yeah. Um, so he used to, he's just a great leader and Essendon person. He could have moved to Gold Coast multiple times, didn't, stayed. Um, and this is how they repay him. Yeah. This is how you repay my boy. <laughs> that sucks, doesn't it? And I think selection's a big issue again here. No Sardis, which I've seen. Yeah. Which Why, I thought. What is going on with the selection? Like it's last. Mm. It's same with like um, Melbourne. Just play, play some kids. See what they got. Like so you got nothing bombers, to lose. The Bombers bring back Guelphie and Dyson Heppel. Wiedemann and Joe Menzi go out for the Lions, who do have to win this game. Uh, Connor McKenna and Noah Answorth come in for Brandon Sarsovich and Shadow Brain, the greatly named Shadow Brain. Joe Danaher, 200th game against his old club, which is kind of Ooh. fun. Interesting. Mm. Doesn't mind going against the Bombers too. The setup here though, I mean, if you think about it for the Lions, like so they very clearly, they're in fifth at the moment. Uh, they are the sort of weird team that have the 54 points where everybody else has 56, 52. So – they have to win to basically not get jumped over by the Dogs, Hawthorne, or the Blues, which is pretty weird. So I guess the big question for me is, like, do the Bombers have, like, any fight left in them, Marcus? What do you reckon? I don't think so. Not from what I've seen previous weeks. I went to the game last week as well. Um, it's just the delivery inside 50 is horrendous. Yeah. Carlton-esque. Horrendous. I think um, Essendon, I think I had it written down here, in five of the last six games have, I think, won the inside 50 count. Yes. Um, actually, in the last eight games, they won the inside 50 count with a record of two and six. Yep. They've, they've kicked 77.8 points yeah. per game in that bit, which is just ridiculous, right? Mm. Uh, Brisbane smoked them 87.45 last year. Joey Duckett's kicked six goals. He did. doesn't mind a couple of goals against his old team. Uh, Brisbane have won four of the last five between the two. The Gabatoire hasn't been quite twary this year, but it's been twary enough, I think, for the Bombers. Uh so it would be ideal if they sent Dyson off with a win, I feel, because it would definitely help Carlton's chances of sneaking <laughs> up higher in the ladder if they do win. 
I just can't quite see them doing it. Like Brisbane cooking it last week against the Magpies is yep. just like inexcusable, right? Like yeah. you cost mm-hmm. yourselves at a top four spot. They're going to probably put the hurt on us, and I think so. Yeah, they cost um, a home home qualifier. Home qualifier. Yeah. They can like if West Coast do beat Geelong, they can still move back into fourth. But it's kind of like do but, they, but, do they deserve it? Come on. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think Brisbane by forty two. I think they just get out of here, like keep them at arm's length, and it gets pretty pretty ugly. Leo, yep. I think Lions by nineteen. I think Essendon they can stay in it. They can win the clearances, but as you mentioned, kicks inside fifty is terrible, Oof. and I feel like they got a bunch of defenders who don't defend. So that'll come uh, telling in the second half. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it'll be similar to last week. Probably stick around the first half and then the second half it gets ugly. Br- Brisbane pull away, I reckon, 50 points at least. So after all the fire and brimstone of the Essendon edge, if they lose this game, they finish the season on 11 wins, which is the exact same as last year. Yep. Yeah, so I think Brad Scott is the first Essendon manager, uh, Essendon coach, <laughs> not – to play You're in finals, right, <laughs> not to play in finals in his first two seasons. Really, as head coach. That's yes. awesome. What a chaos, chaos yeah. stat. It's a pretty high expectation to play finals in your first two. Years. I did also oh. see someone on TikTok something about like Carlton have won a final since before rest, and I'm like, did you? Yeah. Last year, like literally, just <laughs> happened. What are we doing here? <laughs> anyway, uh, then we have Sydney Adelaide, which is a very, very interesting one. The Swans are 18 and a half point favorites against the Swans. Uh, that might the have Swans actually, are favorites. Uh, sorry, against the, <laughs> against the Crom. Uh, just two birds, you know. It's just weird. I love a good bird bowl, but this one's not a great one. It is quite fun to see two birds fight on the street as well. <laughs> what do, what sure. do you spend your time doing? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the Swans haven't swung the axe. They've gone with the uh, of, against the rest versus rust. They don't want the rust. They only get the one week off. That's fine because I think mm. you're Sydney. You're basically locked into a home qualifying final. You win that, you get another week off anyway, right? So yeah. Tom McCartan goes out. That's fine. Give him a little bit of a rest. Aaron Francis comes back in. Oh, Alex will be upset Alex with that will be one. Stoked by that. <laughs> Might get a message from him. And they just switch Warners, which I just still think they should just do during the game as well. It's like, hey, Chad, you look, look a bit gassed. Throw your Corey on. No one will notice. Yeah. Uh, so Chad and Chunley, Chad Chunley Warner comes back in, which is very nice. Uh, amazingly, Joel Amati's 50th game, the last time these two teams played, he went and booted nine. Mm. Oh, jeez. So, not bad. For the Crom, Ball Ace, Chase Jones, Tax, Walker, Billy Dowling in. Mark Keane, Rankin obviously out, Lockie Gallant, and Josh Rochelle. Well, Great job. Oh, oh, boy. Just that'll show them on it, Crows. Oh, yeah, they'll never try that again. Having a personality, being fun. Anyway. Mm. So Dane Rampy and co still playing this game is a bit, all right, you're just going to continue trying to build the, I guess, collective swansness that sort of fell off in the back half of the season. So I feel like this is a little bit of horse going, I don't want to screw with a good thing. We're just going to keep mm. rolling back some form. Which is sure fair. We, yep. well, exactly. Yeah. Like after they sort of had that weird drop off, probably best not to sort of just get a, too ahead of you, like, like over your skis or whatever. Yep. Um, so Sydney have lost two games at home all year. They're the first ranked offense, third ranked defense. That's the perfect idea for winning a flag, right? Crom, 13th and 10th. Gross. Over under 174.5. I think this flies over. Adelaide yeah. play loosey goosey. I think the Swans put up a big number. I think uh, the Crom sort of fight back. And it was the same as last time, 109 67. Um, five straight wins for the Swans over the Crows. And Adelaide, I mean, when they're away, they haven't been too bad away, but they're mm. awesome at Marvel. Yep. Not at the SCG. So I don't know. Big question Should Errol knock a cap off a Crows fan? <laughs> yeah, sure. Assault! Why? That's assault! <laughs> Sir, the big boy knocked my hat off. I want to sue him. What was that power fan doing? Yeah. Oh, I know. I think he got what he deserved, to be honest. Matt Crouch had knocked his yeah. block off. Yeah. He was, he was, there was clearly saying something because Crouch did the little double take and then knocked yeah. it off. So. Crouch just knocks his hat off and he's mm-hmm. had an assault, assault allegation leveled at him. Anyway, uh, anything else in this Sydney Adelaide game that you're sort of interested in, gentlemen? Not really, really, not, really, no. Just like, struggle to see Adelaide do anything. They lost both of their barometers in Rankine and Michelle. Yeah. So look. I don't know, like, what are Adelaide going to even do in this? Like, I feel like it's the same with Melbourne. It's the same with Essendon. Like, what are they even going to do? Like, I don't know. Well, Adelaide can't move up or down. Yeah. (laughs) They're they're stuck in 15th. Like, that's it. Their season's cooked. Like, whatever. Uh, Questions over Matthew Nix? There's always going to be questions over, but he he gets next year to sort of, like, sort this out. Yeah. But 
if they just have like this horrible just beat down of the hands of Sydney, maybe those questions do arise yeah. over the off season again. But mm. uh, I don't know. I think Sydney win this pretty handily, run over the top of them, thirty six points, six goals, six seven goals. I reckon. Leo? Sydney by 11. I, mm. I just haven't been too impressed by the Swans the last couple of weeks. I know they turn it on and they get the win when needed, but there's just a few patches of play, a few halves of footy where I'm like, this is bottom four stuff. Mm. Somehow they have a percentage above 100 still. That's awesome. Which is <laughs> unreal. Well, that's Adelaide. <laughs> Adelaide. Adelaide, yeah. Adelaide, yeah. Adelaide do, yeah. Um, but oh, I think that goes under now because the Swans by about seven goals, 40 points. Nice. Not bad. It is like it, it's still frustrating. I think watching the Crows, where you look at them and there's talent on each line. Yep. And then you look at the, like the forward line, as we sort of did when they were playing the Power last week. You're like, they've got Fog, they've got Thrillthorpe, they've got Ben Keys, Tex is now back. It's Saligo, Shoal and Co. There's mm. talent. Yep. It just never seems to click for long enough, which is weird. Yeah. So I think Sydney have no problems with that one. Mm. Then Super Sunday. All three of these games have pretty massive, massive, massive top eight implications. Yep. First off, we've got six versus third in my old stomping ground. We're going to B-Town. Ballarat, that's right, Mars (laughs) Stadium, or as I know it, the place where I have my 10-year high school reunion. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Pretty cool, I guess. Uh, 12.30 at Mars Stadium in Ballarat. GWS traveling to B-Town, Bellafourne AA. It's going to be amazing. Well, they the have dogs. before. They beat the dogs by five points before this ground. This is true. No tinglish again for the dogs, though. Uh, if we look at the lineups. Um, oh, he's in. Oh, he's actually been named. Wow, he did get named. Riley West was out as well, though. We mentioned that. That was like a weird jaw thing. So yep. uh, Tim English named on the ground as well. Uh, Riley Garcia, Arthur Jones, Caleb Poulter with your extended benches for the Giants. Lucky Ash goes out with the... Thumb tackle suspension, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Uh, Callum Brown, Xavier Halloran, Harvey Thomas, and Nick Haynes in for the Giants. It is a fascinating setup. GWS, mm. they want to go top two with a win. They've won seven on the trot at the moment. Sydney, Greater Western Sydney, top two. Could it happen? What do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I think they're every chance of winning this game, the Giants. I think Dogs, they coming off a, game, a big win against North. It's not the like greatest form, like. Come up against Port the Adelaide aren't guaranteed either. a victory against Fremantle, yeah. which we'll talk about. So I think they definitely can finish top two. GWS lose and they could slip to four if Geelong win big enough. Mm. Which win they probably Port will. Lose. Win and Port lose their second. Or they make up seven percentage points. But there's a lot, a lot of, of implications <laughs> for GWS, right? They could yeah. finish anywhere. You, I think if you're GWS, you want to finish second, obviously, and you want to have a home qualifying final. Yeah. Because you don't want to be in fourth and go, Do well, you? we're just going to lose another derby. Yeah, I was going to say, would every rather... game is a away game, really, for GWS. True. Would they but that's rather... why they're so good at it. Mm. Would they rather play Sydney away or Port away in the first week of finals? I think they'd Ooh. rather probably play Port. Yeah, I would honestly. agree with that. Because I think their record in the derby, the Sydney derby, hasn't been great, right? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, the Dogs, they actually won 70 to 43 at NG. Back in round 10. Mm. Uh, that was the incredible go- game where they kicked eight goals from 30 scoring shots. What? Yeah. Do and not win that game. That? Uh, the Dogs yeah. have actually won six of the last seven against the Giants, and the Dogs obviously need to win to stay in the finals. Yep. Because if yep. Frio beat Port, they'd actually jump the Dogs. In fact, obviously, Hawthorne, Carlton, Dogs all need to win to avoid being jumped if Frio win. Yep. So six times the last eight years. This is just normal par for course for Dogs fans. Producer Joe is just like, bro, <laughs> every year. Six of the last eight, the last round has had their finals chance to still up in the air, which is insane. Yep. Mm. So, and Mark, amazingly as well, if they win and the Lions and the Cat lose, they're fourth. What? That's not going to happen. What is, going, what is That's happening? That's not going to happen. This is an insane week of footy. I love it. Top four miss out on finals. So, with Tinglish back, how do you think that sort of manages, like, Rory Lobb last week, you know, pinch hitting in the ruck. Yep. meant Darcy's Sam Darcy well, could stay yeah. up front and kick seven goals. Yep. Like, does this sort of free up? Like, Rob, Lobb goes back again with Liam Jones. You get to then sort of throw him around the Cadman and Hogan's and stuff. Yep. I th- feel like with Tinglish, I actually rate the dog's chances a little bit yeah. better, obviously. Mm. Gives them more optionality. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Uh, the dogs don't mind a bit of the, the old Ballarat. I don't know. How are you sort of sitting with this? Kieran Briggs isn't an easy beat either in the ruck. He's he's a big, big unit. Boy, yeah. Um and I don't think I think I don't think really think Tim English has hit his stride this year. No, as he has not in recent years. No. Look, I think GB West can actually come away with a win here. Um Just it'll be close. I, I think it'll go two goals either way, but I'm gonna go lean on the side of GB West. I'll nice. go GB West by about a kick. Well the big question is like, do you trust the dogs to get it done? 
And like the answer is it's the dogs. No. Mm. But I think they're just good enough. I think I'm going to go dogs 14. Yeah, I there think dogs three. I just think at Ballarat, they're pretty tough to beat down there. I know GWS have beaten them there, but I think, yeah, they normally win down there. I think, I think if it was at Marvel, I'd actually go GWS. To be honest. That's an interesting one. Yeah. Ooh. Dogs also don't mind a bit of GWS. Uh, the dogs' overall record, if you had to guess it in Ballarat. How many games have they played there? Percentage-wise or so, how many they've won? There's 12 games. I reckon they've won nine. Uh, I reckon they're probably seven and five. Eight and four. You split it. Not bad. Yes. Round there up. We, there we go. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, so two dogs, one Giants. Interesting. Mm. That's going to be a great game. Not a great game <laughs> will be the one following it because I'll be sitting there going just punching myself in the face because that would be more fun. The Blues, a three-and-a-half-point favourite somehow against the St Kilda Saints at Marvel, 3.20 p.m. Sunday. I will definitely not be there because you couldn't <laughs> drag me there. I was going to ask for, you going to be there. You couldn't drag me there for love or money. To be honest, I was actually looking at it and uh, – couldn't actually end up making it. We've got another thing on. So the over-under is 167.5. I'd 100% go under on that because this will just turn into a massive slog as the Saints drag this into the dirt. But amazingly for Carlton, they have named Adam Saad, Charlie, Kerno and Orazio Fantasia. So no Mackay. <laughs> no Mackay, which is... Uh, well, I expected more inclusions, yeah. to be honest. You thought maybe there'd be one or two. The weird news that popped off yesterday, well, later... Yeah, later yesterday was it Sam Doherty is actually like, well, I could be fit for finals. Everyone's like, mm. really? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to risk that. But yeah. anyway, yep. for the Saints, Matthias Philippou's back. Nice. Watch out. Jack Hayes, Tom Campbell, and Angus McLennan. Out goes Caminiti. Tough one for Caminiti. They're the changes week. I expect to see of a team that is got nothing to play for. Like, Jack Hayes, tough one. But I don't know. The, the Saints are awesome at the moment. Like they are playing. Apart from the Brisbane game, the Brisbane game was tough. But like that, that turnaround against the Cats, like the yep. first half against the Cats, you're like, yep, more of the same. Saints, yep. classic. That second, that third quarter alone, mm. you're like, what the hell was that? Where was that all season? A 63 point yeah. turnaround. They ran right over the top of them. Yep. And the Saints have now won four of five. The 63 point turnaround last week was insane. They've won five of the last six at Marvel as well, which is crucial because yep. Carlton, not mm. that great at Marvel. They blew the game against Adelaide there earlier this year. Yep. Um, they almost got run down by the Roos in the second game that they Lost played there. Lost to the dogs there. Lost to the dogs there pretty badly like a month ago. Um, mm. Even very unconvincing in games against the Suns and GWS where they took, they did their pattern and we played awesome for this one quarter, we won the game kind of thing. Mm. Uh, so it's winning in for the Blues. Yep. Saints want to play spoiler. I kind of probably trust the Saints more to play spoiler yep. than the Blues to win and get in. Uh, if the Blues do win, they're probably most likely to still land eighth. You go to Brisbane for an elimination final, a bit tough one. If Essendon do beat Brisbane and the Bulldogs lost to GWS, Blues could get to sixth and host Frio if they won. Chaos, mm, right? That chaos. is chaos. Let me take that. Fourth spot is actually mathematically alive, just saying. <laughs> Double chance, baby. Cats would have to lose the Eagles. And you're playing Sydney away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so look, I think the Saints form is almost just annoying. It's so annoying. As a blue, like you look at that, it's the perfect storm. Round seventeen, you look at this game, Carlton go, no problems. Well, winning that. Yeah. Now you're just like, oh, there's no chance they win this. Mm. Um, do the Blues do the damn thing? That's the big question. I just, you saw what they sort of did with their backs against the wall last week. Yeah. That was against a West Coast team that did not score in the second quarter. The desperation was amazing. Pessimistic Jim says Saints by twenty eight. Optimistic Jim says Blues by sixty four. <laughs> sure. It's probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, I just don't know. You kind of got to hit that sweet spot with like Saad and Kerno coming back. Is it? Do you rest? Did you have to like rest them this week? But then you got to make sure that you win. You got to make sure you win. But then you got to make sure that they don't get injured if they do play this week. Um, yeah. I don't know. I still think they win. Really? I, th I think so. I think they've learned from their mistakes of a couple of years ago against Collingwood. I think, and with the leadership of Cripps, he's just an another one of those games where he just dragged you over the line. Um, and I think that could be the case in a, in a low-scoring affair. Yep. Leo? 
I think this will be a very good game of football, actually. And I think Saints get it done by nine points. I just think their back line will give you the clamps. And uh, Kerno might be a little bit underdone. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, Callum Wilkie and stuff sort of just going up against him, just like... Intercept, sort of. Just like, yeah. if he can't run and jump, like, he was looking cooked before the injury. Now yeah. he's had, like, two weeks, well, a week off, and it's like, oh, geez. They did name Brody Kemp at half forward again, though, and Mitch McGovern did get up for this one. He was a big question mark going into this one. Yeah. So you do have the extended bench, but... That's the likes of Bins, Moya, Cooper Lord, etc. So yeah, um, we'll see what Is happens. Is it a case of Ching Cotter possibly like tagging an interceptor like Wilkie? Or will he go to Wanganui Miller? Well, he actually played that role Sinclair. earlier in the year, right? Like, so the tagging or def- well, the tagging forward. Might go to Sinclair. Yeah. It's probably not a bad idea yeah. too. Mm. Ollie Hollands, Elijah Hollands, a lot of it comes down to them, I think. Let's see what happens. Fascinating game. Finally, this is the final game of the 2024 home and away season. Frio versus Port Adelaide. Mm. The Dockers one and a half point favourites, the over under 159.5 at Optus Stadium out west at 6.10pm Eastern time. What a finish to the year, gentlemen. What a finish to the year. This is going to be very good. Yeah. So they've already played a thriller this year as well. Port won that back in round five, 66-63, because Frio don't play easy games. We know that. (laughs) They are the best defense in the AFL, 75.3 points a game they give up. Uh, Frio will probably know their fate. Well, they will know their fate before this game starts, essentially. Yeah, because your game will end at six and yep. they're starting at so if Carlton 20 win, past six. Hawthorne yeah. win. And so as they're running out, they're Bulldogs be win. On the phones, oh, we've got to win on this On the old or? dog and bone, just checking the <laughs> AFL up, going, Where, why is there no reception out west? <laughs> uh, it is... A chaotic, chaotic situation for Frio to find themselves in, but also for Port because they're like, well, we need to win to like lock in number two. Yep. Like if GW, like because they'll also have like results going uh, either their way. So if GWS win, Port definitely need to win to stay second. Uh, they're still far enough ahead of the Cats that they probably don't <sighs> give that 7%. one up. But you never know. So <laughs> what do we think happens here? Like the Dockers have lost. Their last three straight, but it's by a total of 21 points. Mm. Mm. They're 7 3 and 1 at home this season. And no Darcy, no Tracy. Michael Walters comes back. Erasmus comes back. James Aish named as well. Mm. Port, however, get Mitch Georgiades back. That's a big in. Love that. Mm. Adon Davis and then Josh Sin, Jed McEntee, and Ollie Lord. Obviously, Dan Houston goes out, and so does Quinton Narkle. Oh, Ooh, boy. Georgiades is the yeah. top goal scorer, isn't he? A lot season? of uh, Port fans in our comments will be very happy Georgiades is back. I love Georgiades. Mm. Yeah, really Georgiades 2+. plus. Uh, Port have won four of the last five between the pair. And they actually won 78-54 at Optus Stadium last year. Uh, obviously, Freo had a bit of a down year last year. But power is six and four away as well. They've won seven in the last eight games. Win, you have a home qualifying final. That is awesome, right? Can never tear us apart. Is he Ken Uff? Who knows? GDO is going to make up the seven goals worth of percentage to catch Port if they, you know, all end up tied. Cats need to make up that 21 goals worth of percentage basically. Mm. But it sort of just comes down to the simple idea of like do the Dockers have enough without Tracy and Darcy to keep up with the power? Who will obviously <clears throat> miss Houston? Yeah, I think Port will definitely miss Houston. I still think Port have like enough outside run. I feel like you look at Frio's team and I think Footy Classified put a lot on uh, – Jago Mira and Nat, Nat Fife to do a bit more defensively. And I think those two might get a bit exposed for for Nor- uh, for North Port Adelaide's ball use. Yeah, yeah Rosie and Butters will shred yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. The old boys, that's no good. Yeah. If this was in Adelaide, I'd be swaying towards Port Adelaide, but Freeman will just a little glimpse of hope there with it being at Optus. And I think I'm going to back them. Nice one. Well, I mean, the big question is that so much of this is going to rely on whether or not this will be a dead rubber. For the Dockers. Yep. Mm. If the Dockers come in going, wow, we can't make finals, come on, man, what are we doing? Yep. Like that just gives up the ghost. I feel like I've tipped the Saints, so I think Freo sort of come into this with a bit of fire under them. I think Freo actually get the win, snag yep. it out of nowhere because they're at home. I don't think it'll be – I think I wrote 16. I'm going to say six. Yeah. Leo? I don't think it'll be a dead rubber. I've also tipped the Saints, but I think Port win by a goal. I think – Port on paper just have a bit more pace, and I just think Freo just they love a close game. So I don't know if it'll be a, a big sort of uh, big margin here. So. Yeah, that lot of that loss at Optus against Geelong really really killed them. them. Well, the loss yeah. to Essendon just like falling that apart. Point, like that, that was point, absolute yeah. chaos. So yep. um, 
if you think about Port and their sort of run this year as well, like the showdown win last week was awesome. Like they basically took over the game in the second half, ran away with it. They just snuck past the Ds at the G a couple of weeks prior to that. They smashed the Swans at yeah. home. Mm. They just pretty easily took care of Carlton here at Marvel. Uh, they demolished Richmond. They randomly lost that stupid Gold Coast game because it was at mm. Gold Coast. They deleted the dogs as well prior to that. Yep. Got by the Saints, got smashed by Brisbane, and that's sort of like the sort of weird story of their second half of their year where it's been mm. they've just put together some awesome wins. The Sydney win was absolutely chaotic. It was at home. Can they continue it away? I think Frio just mm. sort of do something weird. Jai missed five goals. Don't mind that. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of which, that's it. That would be the end of the regular season. So we better do a big call for round 24. Let me be pessimistic, Jim, for a second. Okay. Blues lose, miss the eight because Frio come from nowhere to beat Port. Pessimistic Jim says his final eight is Sydney, Port Adelaide, Geelong, GWS, Brisbane, Western Bulldogs, Hawks, and Frio. Optimistic Jim says, well, the Blues smash the Saints because the Saints stink and Frio lose as well. So off we go. Sydney, Port Adelaide, top two, Geelong three, GWS four because I've got the Dogs winning yep. that game. Yep. Uh, Brisbane, Dogs, Hawks, and Blues. So... I don't think the Blues would win enough to get anywhere higher. But either way, it's going to be nuts. I don't mind the Giant Miss 5 plus as well as the uh, lone man yeah, that's a good one. against that port defense. But it, it is hard to sort of look at some big calls for this one across the weekend, like Sam Darcy against the GWS backline. Fascinating setup, right? Yeah. And then you've got flip side, Jesse Hogan going for a Coleman up against the Dogs and Liam Jones and Roy Lobb and stuff. So weird setup. How about Jeremy Cameron, eight goals? Mm, maybe. I like that. Big I goal. like the sound of that. Big well, goal. I'm going with another Geelong forward. Oh, here we go. Shannon Neal, five plus goals oh, against Sh- West Coast. Is- What's Shannon Neal's career high, Leo? Uh, I don't think, <laughs> don't know, but he's he's tinkered away with ones and twos since he's coming to the team. Uh, oh, so th- that, this is why it's a big call, though. This That's is why a great it's call. a waffle, waffle defense, though. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's a big call. Yeah. His, it's still a defense. His career high in his three years are three goals. There you go. So that's mm, great. Career high, five goals. Everyone's going to be thinking, oh, Jeremy Cameron's going to kick eight, and he probably will. <laughs> but I think Shannon Neal can sneak in for five. He's had a solid year, and I think this will be his breakout game against the uh, depleted Eagles back line. <clears throat> nice. As long as Marcus picks like Ollie Henry to kick six, we're laughing. <laughs> so. Well, what's better than one big call? Five. Seventy. Well, I'll give you two. Right. <laughs> I'll give you two. Richmond win and cough up the number one pick. <laughs> <laughs> to North Melbourne, and also the dogs lose to GWS and miss out on the top Jeez. eight. Well, I guess if we go by your tips, that's how, that's how it works, right? Yep. Yeah. That's awesome, apart from the Richmond tip, which you didn't have the balls to tip. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, the Richmond win, if Richmond smashed Gold Coast in a dimmer bowl, like I've talked about how like, the most of my tips for the back half of this season have just been the fun outcome. That is very clearly the fun outcome. Yeah. But because I'm now Ned Moyle's best mate, I can't tip against the Gold Coast. He's emergency. He's not even playing. I know, but he's still my best mate. I've got to back the Bush. Uh, anyway, go the Blues. Uh, keep an eye on. Have you got anything you want to keep an eye on specifically this week? Because I've got one thing for each game. Not particularly. I feel like you've covered yeah. it here with your list, Jim. Keep an eye on for round 24. How much desperation the Pies play with? Because you know how yeah. much you're going to win by. Can you put the Melbourne Demons to the sword? Because it would be mm. very funny if they won by 90. Geelong's total versus West Coast, that's obvious. Yep. And they put up the double ton. 200. I think they can. Keep an eye on Dusty. Just keep an eye on him. Is he even mm. going to be there? <laughs> he might do the lap and then leave. <laughs> awesome. He's just leave his car in the car park again as well. Uh, it is epoch-defining talent. That's what Dusty is. Like, he's just like an era-defining mm. dude. The Norm Smiths, the Brownlow, the titles. Like, he's the dude. Yep. And now he's gone. It's like yep. he... Buddy, Gary Ablett Jr., like these are like generational talents that we're sort of losing. We do have an incredible, like I've pointed this out all the se- all through this season that I don't think there's ever been more talent in the AFL than it has been before, yeah. which is awesome. But it's also, look, just keep an eye on him. Just say goodbye to a champion. Mm-hmm. What happens in Tassie? Weird things. Weird. So keep an eye on it. Heppel and Essendon's response. I'm fascinated to see how much fight Essendon put up for Dyson Heppel. I'd like yep. to see a little bit more than what we've seen. Sydney resting players uh, sort of and just like their rotations in that game, like just yep. sort of how they approach it and just go, oh, mm. we've got the crom under control. Uh, the beam cans in B-Town on the hill. I just want to go up there right now. Just, God, boy, see how we're going here. 
A couple of beam tins. Is that why you're not going to the Carlton game? You're just yeah, going to go to Ballarat, <laughs> smashing tins on the hill. Uh, Saints choking the daylights out of the blues at Marvel. I'm just, mm. I can already see into my future of just yeah. me sitting there depressed on Sunday afternoon. And then the other one is Port. Like, because the five game suspension came down yesterday, we talked it out on yesterday's show. It does put a big hole in that team going into a finals series, right? And yeah. it's like one of those holes where you're like, how do you fill that one? I'm fascinated to see how they fill that run and like that rebound off halfback from Dan Houston. So well, I would have thought that he got four and played in the granny, but if they made it, but yeah, I, th- I thought it was slightly harsh. Well, <laughs> I do love the appeal is starting. Uh, I think Zeitz is already on the tweet machine. Um, I feel sorry for that man. He's just, <laughs> he's full of schnitz and he's just full of like oh, info. Gosh. It's awesome. Uh, I do like that he did come out and say that the power argued that Houston should have received the same benefit for his exemplary record as Charlie Cameron did, a.k.a. the good bloke rule. Mm. Um, so I don't know if that's actually going to happen. But uh, the power also argued that sentencing discretion be reopened due to failure of procedural fairness, which is uh, the one we had two well, of those get off like a couple of weeks ago, right? So. Yeah. Well, someone in the comments mentioned uh, ranking got four for an off-the-ball high hit and, and Houston got five. Were sort of on the ball, yep. didn't leave the ground hit. I do like the power was saying that there was an error of law that Houston had a right to elect to bump. He was entitled to elect to bump instead of tackling. I don't know. He chose yeah. to bump and he knocked a dude out. Yeah, I think if, he, if, he, if you choose to bump, then... I think he's on a hiding to nothing, I reckon, there. Either way, super coach tips, vibes, thoughts. Uh, do you have a grand final to be a part of this weekend, gentlemen? I'm more paying attention to my score rather than who I've been playing. Yep. But I don't think so, no. I was a part of a Supercoach draft grand final with my mates and got smashed because my mate had Brent Daniels who'd scored 195. 195. Tough one. Uh, so you, your vibes, thoughts, so for people out there playing for this one last week for the yep. overall ranking and stuff, you got some vice-captain, captain thoughts. I think I, t- I think on the Supercoach show on Monday I talked up Obviously, Dacos has got a pretty rough yeah. record at times against Melbourne, but he does love the G, mm. and this could be a massive, massive game against the Demons team that is giving up plenty of points to midfielders over the last few weeks. Uh, Gorn as well in that same game could obviously go massive. Yeah. Darcy I think like Neil and Zorko against the Bombers, nice you know, one. who don't tag as well. Uh, pretty big scores there, I reckon. Stupid Sexy Flanders at the G against the Tigers. Oh I actually have the C on him at the moment. Uh don't know why my VC is on Tom Green. That's wrong. But either way, we're going to go that on Gorn. Uh, any other thoughts? I don't mind Heaney's advice against Adelaide too. I think he could be a sneaky one. And Bont as well down down in Ballarat or up in Ballarat. I think we're tougher. I think gbo has got such a – they've got a physical midfield as well. The bond, though. It is it's the Bont. It, it is, is the Bont. <laughs> uh, it was interesting to see the most traded players in uh, for the last week and like the just the sheer lack of trades remaining in the entirety of Supercoach. It's like Lockie Whitfield. Mm. Uh, is the top traded, uh, the top trade target of 887 trades brought him in. That's like people who have held on to Sheasel for that one more week and gone, yeah, uh, oh, God, he's not being named. Click. <laughs> uh, Dylan Moore, number two, very interesting. He's yep. had a couple of really, really good weeks. Jack Sinclair as well, another one for the Sheasel switch. Nick Newman, another one too. <laughs> Amazingly, Cooper Lord, 346. Just he might not be playing. <laughs> I, I, I don't have Dylan Moore on my list, actually, on Supercoach. I have Brent Daniels, which is funny, in at five. And Sinclair, everyone Strange bumped up one. Yeah. Bizarre. Well, there you go. That is the AFL Today show for today. What a mm. incredible, incredible ride this has been, just doing this regular season. This home and away season, round 24. And it's all coming down to this, with everything still up in the air. I hate it. I hate that the Blues <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, Old oh, mate, dumb old Alex over there the other day. He's like, just imagine if Freo had, like, had those two free kicks played against. I'm like, yeah, just imagine Mitch, Mitch McGovern had a kick straight. Yeah, yeah. I would have been out of my misery. Like, we're laughing. We're already in. Like, mm. uh, it is a really long season, but I have said from the very start, I don't care. Make it longer. Footy, footy. I'm the homer with the oh, donut yeah. machine, but it's footy. No preseason. We're just playing. Well, we're getting that with AFLW today, aren't we, Jim? That's it. AFLW is back as well. So, Anyway, thank you to the two ding guy for jumping on today, Leo. Thank you, Jim. It's sad to see footy end. Well, yeah. well, 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 for my team. Teams, <laughs> for one team here, possibly, maybe yeah. two. Oh, God. Whew. But, yeah, it is weird to say farewell to 10 teams, but that's yep. what we'll be doing in the round, the week off. We'll be wrapping up the 10 teams who didn't make it their season, past grades and all that sort of stuff, nice. which will be very, very fun. Uh, thank you to Marcus for jumping on again Thanks, for Jim. the first time in a little bit, which is good. 
Remember to smash a like for all the shows across all the socials as well. The AFL Today Show, of course, but the AFLW Today Show as well, which has mm. launched this week with Bryony and Alex and even the little stats boy just popping up here and they're going, <laughs> hello. Uh, the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia. NFL Australia is coming very, very fast down the pike next week. Oh, God. Got to do more prep. Uh, hold all <laughs> tickets as well. Get around them on your podcast app and across all your social platforms as well. Get around them like, I don't know, there's a great picture of uh, Sticks Kernahan kicking a goal to get the Blues into the 19 – to launch the Blues into the 1987 uh, finals to solidify their spot in it. They then won the flag. Let's go, the baggers! Hashtag flaggers! We'll catch you on Sunday after the Blues smash the Saints! Come on, boys! Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, God, I already hate this. Anyway, more AFL today on Sunday. We'll wrap up all of that. We might even be live as well, so keep an eye on that. Yeah. I think Ooh, we'll be doing a live nice. show as it all happens, as it all unfolds. It should be awesome. So until then, look after yourselves, and remember, footy was back. Yeah.